Hey everyone, so this week we're going to be dealing with more Japanese knives that have been abused. So last week then we fixed up my co-worker's knife and we were talking about this at work and one of my seniors actually said that her partner has some abused Japanese knives as well and so obviously I said I'm happy to fix them up and to send me photos and when I saw the photos I was honestly quite disappointed in the state that they were in. So we've got them over here in this little bag and there's three knives here. There's a Gyuto here. It's a really nice Sunmai construction so you can see it's got softer steel on the outside and then a really hard insert of steel and it's got a lot of a few specks of rust on it and the edge is completely chipped with rust throughout it. The tip is actually in pretty good condition though and the handle is not too bad, but there's a bit of sticky stuff that I don't actually know what it is. So first order of business will be to wash these knives. Next up we've got a, a nice santaku, also in a similar condition with rust, chips on the edges, handle with sticky stuff on it. Again the tip is not too bad on this one, uh, but it's mostly the rust and the chips. And this one is also a sunmai construction, so this one also has quite a nice steel insert in the middle. And finally we have this utility knife. And this utility knife's tip is actually pretty rounded so I'll probably fix that up. Uh, and this one's got quite a lot of rust on it and quite deep chips actually. So this one actually has quite a deep chip which is about a millimeter in. Um, so that's going to take some time to work out. And also it's got a lot of rust just accumulating at the, at the transition from the handle to the blade. So that needs to be worked out. So because of time constraints, then I'm probably only going to show me working on one of them, probably the Gyuto, on camera, but I'll do the rest and I'll do it before and after. Like last week, they're probably not going to be dramatic changes, but it'll hopefully improve the performance of the knife. So with the Gyuto, how we're going to address it is we're going to wash it to get rid of that sticky stuff. Then we're going to hit it with some chemical rust remover to get rid of the rust. And the compound I use has a chemical lifter as well as an abrasive powder in it. So that should help to sand it back as well. Then I'm going to actually use Uchiko powder, uh, which is normally used with swords, but I find it actually gives it a pretty closed grain finish on steel. And so that will help prevent it from rusting in future. Then we'll do the same as we did with the last set, with the last knife last week, where I used the diamond stain to bring back the edge to true and sharpen it. But what I'm going to do with this one, because it's not stainless steel, is I'm also going to use a 5000 grit water stone to help give it a closed grain finish so it won't rust and it should probably be sharper as well. So I'll, I'll show you guys that one. And then we'll hit the handle with some wax. It's not in too bad condition so it probably doesn't need to be sanded down but we'll see how it goes after we wash it. And then that should be done. So let's do it. Alright, so first up is rust removal and I'm going to use Autosol for that. So Autosol has a chemical rust lifter as well as a fine abrasive powder. So it works on it in two ways and it should be really good for removing the rust on these knives and I use it for my swords as well. Just get a little bit on your kitchen towel and wipe it on. So now I've got the blade covered in it, it's going to dry out and then that rust lifter is going to start working and then the abrasive powder is going to come out and I can use that to wipe it down. Now with Autozole then it's really important to do it before you sharpen the knife because it will blunt the edge. So I've just done the spine and you can see it comes out to this brilliant polish underneath but there's a black powder on top and that's actually just steel shavings um, from the abrasive powder working its magic. So this should come out quite nicely. Alright so we've done the autosol, it's got a black layer of powder, so let's wipe that off and we'll see how much rust is left. Alrighty, so it's really nice and shiny, but there's a few rust spots up near the tip, which are actually quite deep. 
So I'm going to have a go with Autozol again. If that doesn't work, then we might need to use some sandpaper on them. Alright, so those rust pockets are actually really deep in. So I'm going to get some high grit sandpaper and then we'll try and sand them out and then hit it with Autozol again. Alright, so we've got a little bit of soap and water some high grit sandpaper, let's just let that soak and then we will sand it down. So there it is, sanded um, from 400 all the way to 1200. There's still some really deep seated rust pockets that I'm worried about sanding because of this engraving here. And I don't want to get rid of the engraving just to get rid of these rust spots. So I've decided to leave some of them, but I've gotten rid of the bulk of them and it's a lot shinier and looks a lot nicer. So I'm going to hit it with Autozol again, try and polish it up and we'll see how it looks. So there it is, polished up. And one really cool thing about the polishing is that it's really brought out the uh, transition line between the hard steel and the soft steel and it looks really good. Alright so now we get on to grinding. Let's grind this jagged edge all the way back to being flat. Alright, so I've ground it back to true. Not sure if you can see that, but there's no um, chips or divots in the edge, which is exactly what we want. Now, because this isn't stainless steel like the other one, I'm actually going to use a 5000 grit water stone. So I've got that soaking up right now, and hopefully they'll close the grain of the edge and prevent the edge from rusting and make it less likely to chip. Alright, so I've got my Shapton 5000 grit stone here. Got some paper towels so that it won't make too much of a mess. And I've got some water over here so I can always keep it wet. Alrighty, so it's been sharpened to 5000 grit. It's got a really nice sharp edge. So let's see if it works. Oh yeah, that's what we want. So, this one, blade-wise, is completely done. Let's wax up the handle and then it'll be done. So there are some dark marks on the handle. So I'm just going to hit it with some 1200 grit sandpaper. So I've talked about Renaissance wax in my last video. It's a really nice microcrystalline wax, gives it a really nice feel. So just use a little bit and wipe it on the handle. Alrighty, so now the handle feels really nice and this is done. Alrighty, so today we cleaned up this knife. I'm going to go and do the other two off camera uh, and they'll take quite a long time and I've got a lot of footage to deal with from this one. But this knife is nice and it's done up. There's no chips in the edge anymore. There is still a little bit of rust but because I don't really have the skill or expertise to get rid of that deep set rust with, and I'm worried about hitting this engraving so I think I'll just leave that. I'd rather not completely finish off the knife than do any damage to it. So hopefully my, my senior at work uh, or her partner takes better care of the knives. I think a lot of people get Japanese knives because they think that they'll be better. But an important thing to realize with Japanese knives is that they're a precision tool. So in the same way that you wouldn't use a scalpel to cut down a tree, then a Japanese knife, you really shouldn't be cutting anything with much resistance with it. So this hopefully will get treated better and hopefully it won't come back to me in a bad condition. 
So with that, I'll see you next time.